uh, it's Peter from Records. Um, I've got a little project uh, to do for uh, an event coming up um, where we're going to do some pen turning. So I'm just going to prep um, the pens blanks myself. So I'm going to cut some up and then I'll follow on with a video uh, drilling them out and then uh, um, maybe even making uh, a pen up as well. Um, but in the main it's just at the moment I'm just going to prep myself a load of um, pen blanks. So um, they've asked me if I do a quick video on it just to show you guys because we do get asked questions about different sizes. I'm going to be using some uh, slimline pen kits so I'm going to generally do the square of the blank at about 19 mil. Um, and that's quite tight on um, on the size so if you want to you can err on the side add a little bit extra if you wanted to um, and say I'm doing it 90 mil and overall length I'm going to do about 55 mil so the insert I'm going to use the tube is for the slimline kits and this is approximately uh, 50 mil so I'm not leaving myself a lot of meat wastage so on my undercut I'll just have a small little undercut on there um, and then I've got so it's the slimline kits I've not got a lot of wastage on the outside if you're doing bigger kits then obviously you're going to be doing bigger square sections so I'm just going to set this up now so I've got myself a nice length of sycamore um, I'm not going to push all that through it just will be a little easier to manage if I chop this in half so this is approximately 24 inches long I'm going to chop it down to half of that roughly so with my bandsaw the BS350 if I put the fence right across and I've got the new um, fence added on into here so I'm just going to have just short 12 inches 300 mil across there so a little bit hard but it's not doesn't really matter before I chop it up I'm going to use my mitre fence with the smaller sections anyway so while I'm doing that I want to make that square to my blade so I can do this in a couple of ways I can do it with the actual fence right across and put it roughly about to the zero on, on, your, um, on, your, on your readings check it against the blade as well set up on that another way to do it as well if you've got if fences all set up and that's all nice and square and you want to make the two perfect together Okay, I'll put that across there. Bring your actual fence across and on the wide side bring that up to the, the actual mitre fence and you'll square off there. So I could move that right up there and get myself even more bearing area across the, the fence. I see I know my fence is square and that no that's gonna be absolutely perfect to that. So I'll pinch that off, that over there this back to here, lock that up and I'm nice and square so I can set this up now to rip through there so if I do the first cut, get my bandsaw started first and because I've got the, uh, the main fence right across the left hand side I can actually bring my tool arm down a little bit closer as well so just for the actual object I'm going to cut and that's a nice little cut with those two up quick and easy to do that and those are nice and square and now my ends are all right I can lose that for a minute in my defence. So what I want to do now is take my tool arm up again, bring the fence across. I'm using the widest part of the fence 
Um, I could turn the fence over onto the narrow side, but I'd only have a small bearing area. So I prefer to have the larger bearing area for the, the timber I'm going to put up against it. So I need to bring the guides just above the actual fence itself. So make sure that it's all nice and clear, I've got no fouling on there. And the next part I want to set up, as I say, the squares are roughly 19 millimeter. So on your bandsaw blade, you've got your teeth on there. So you've got one tuft to the right and one to the center and one to the left. So what I'm going to set up to is the one to the left. So I'll bring this across here and roughly on the outside edge, get to about 19 mil. There you go, it's only a pen blank but it gives me something up. Uh, if I wanted to do something a little bit more precise, what you can do is use a piece of waste material as well. So before you put your cut in and you've got your decent bit of timber in there, do your cut. Then check your size. It's always good if you say if you use a nice bit of timber that's cutting a little bit over about a millimetre. So we'll just move that back just a fraction and then check it again. Been a little bit fussy, but that's I'm a, I'm happy with that. So what I can look to do then, once I've got that set up, is to put my piece of timber up. But what I want to do with this is work off a nice square face. So if you put your material up against the actual fence and table, you'll see which is the truest face. I've got a little bit of wobble on there. I've got a little bit of angle on there. Not bad at all on there, so I've got the high side, but you can just check around it. So a little bit of angle on there. I think that's going to give me what I want. So then um, I'll push these through. When you're cutting any material like this, don't be in a don't be in a rush to just push it through. Just let the bandsaw do the actual work, and you'll find you'll get a much better finish on the material as well. Um, you won't get so many. Uh, coarse marks in there. As long as it's with the grain, if you're going against the grain then you'll, you'll still get those um, uh, extra line marks in there. And it's just because you're tearing on the grain. So I um, hope that uh, is some use. So again start my bandsaw first because this is one and a half horsepower. myself a few pieces to go on. I've chopped these down as I was saying to about 55 mil so and that's quite that's quite I haven't got a lot of wastage on um, when I've done my recess so you can add a little bit extra if you wanted to um, but you're gonna uh, then have a bigger shoulder underneath so uh, 
it's up to you how you do it if you want to leave a little bit extra on sale. I've got my 55. Again, I'm going to set this up. So I want 55 against the left hand side. Because you're locking up with uh, a lever around, and you've got a round knob on there, what you time to do sometimes is as you lock that knob down, it actually pushes the fence more to the right hand side. So it's worth checking a couple of times. Don't just take it as a, a quick one for granted. But that's going to be about right. Again, if you want to, you can use a bit of waste just to check it as well, like sort of thing. So before I start that, again a bit of waste just to check it off. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm on to 55. So now with my mitre fence, I'm going to chuck these off, and I've got a little tub here for my fish food so I can put that in the back to catch or drill the hole in the back just to catch the, um, the pieces I want to chop off because these are a little bit smaller I'm just going to keep my fingers out the way so you can gang them up if you want to if you want to do a couple at a time um, or just do just do the one piece at a time so again I've got the fence high at the moment, but I have got clearance on the, on the fence, so what I can do now is actually bring the guides down a little bit lower. All I've got to make sure is when I do that, that my actual fence clears through. So lock that up, and then I can whiz these off. That's only a few of what I've got to do, but gives you an idea anyway. At least then you've got a nice uniform set of blanks to work to. So they're all roughly going to be about the right, the right sort of size. So you've got some consistency. This is a piece of, this is a bit of sycamore. Um, so the grain pattern on this is going to be very close and uh, we're only doing these really just to show people um, how to actually do it when we do an event so I'm just going to do some prep on there if it was like a, a piece of you or something like that then you probably would want to keep not to mix them all up and try and keep the grain pattern the same then you could do them in pairs and just mark the actual um, the pairs that you're doing um, so as you uh, get a nice uh, finish on your uh, on your pen that you're doing. So, um, so anyway, that's a quick little one on there on doing some pen blanks. Um, hope that's useful to you. We'll fit, follow it on um, using the Herald and um, a small chuck, and I'll show you how to drill them out. Um, but how to get it so as it's nice and consistent as well so you get a nice accurate hole in there so what you want is a, a hole that's basically in the center you don't want it too much one way or the other and it's a lot easier to do than you may think on um, on a lathe so um, we'll take you through that on the next one as well so hope to catch you soon uh, take care